this morning. If you would, I want you to turn your Bibles to the book of Genesis, Genesis chapter 16. Genesis 16 through 6 through 13. Genesis chapter 16, verses 6 through 13. Amen. When you're there, stand with me as we read the word of God. The first book of the Bible, the book of Genesis, chapter 16, verses 6 through 13 is what we're going to read. Amen, if you're there. Amen. And the scriptures read thus, it says, But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And an angel of the Lord found her by a fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain on the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence camest thou, and, will, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress Sarah. And an angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress and submit thyself unto her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said to her, Behold, thou art with child, and thou shalt bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord had heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man. His hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all of his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her. Thou God sees me? For she said, Have I also here look after him that sees me? You may be seated in the presence of the Lord this morning. You know, this is a very interesting piece of scripture this morning as we meditate on the word of God. And I focus on what she said in verse 13. Hagar seems to be amazed that God sees her. In other words, she says, you mean to tell me God sees me? Yes. And I'm here to encourage somebody this morning that in every situation in your life, no matter what you have going on in your life, whether it be good or whether it be bad, whether it be trials, whether it be tribulations, or rather be blessings after blessings after blessing. I'm here to tell you this morning that God sees all. Amen? And because God sees all, my topic for you this morning is that prayer is a breath away from a breakthrough. Amen? Amen. Prayer is a breath away from a breakthrough. And you know, you can take it further. Sometimes just praise is a breath away from a breakthrough. Anybody need a breakthrough this morning? Amen? Yeah, okay. You know, sometimes the word of God and sometimes the will of God will unfold like a mystery. Hagar was this Egyptian servant, maidservant of Sarah, Abraham's wife. Sarah was married to Abraham and she wanted to have a son and give her husband a son, but she found herself barren, not able to have a child. But she prayed to God and when things didn't work out the way she thought they could work out, she took her servant, her servant maid, Hagar, and she gave Hagar to Abraham so that they can have a son together. And in other words, Hagar became somewhat of a surrogate. And so Hagar is now been given to Abraham to bear a son between herself on behalf of Sarah. But you know, sometimes we got to be careful what we ask for. Amen? And so when Abraham wife Sarah realized what she had done, all of a sudden she had second thoughts about it. Because she got upset with Hagar. And she became bitter and she started to treat Hagar very badly. And as a matter of fact, 
actually put Hagar up. Get up. And sent her on her way. She had second thoughts. So Hagar is running away from adversity. And as she's out in the wilderness, all she's trying to do is find some comfort and find some strength. As a matter of fact, she's out in the desert trying to find water. And while she's out there alone in the desert searching for water, an angel of the Lord appeared to her. And the angel told her that God had sent me here to speak a word into your life. And that's why I'm here to tell you this morning, sometimes your breakthrough is nothing but a prayer away. In other words, sometimes your breakthrough is just a breath away. Amen. 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 And so she found that when she praised God, because the Bible says that she told the angel, she said, your God sees me. She was amazed. That God sees. God sees everything that you're going through. God knows just what to do. All you got to do is trust in the Lord and offer up some praise to God. Offer up a prayer to God. And sometimes in that breath, you find your breakthrough. Somebody ought to give God some praise. How many people know that my God shall supply all of your needs according to the riches of his glory? Amen? Amen. How many people know that the Bible said that God told uh, 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 David, he said that I am the Lord your God, which brought you out of the, the land of Egypt. Open up your mouth wide and I will feed you manna from heaven. I'm just telling you this morning that sometimes your breakthrough is just a breath away. Somebody ought to give God some praise this morning. I know the book of Corinthians tells us that God's grace is sufficient. In other words, the grace of God is all you need. His grace is sufficient. I am the Lord that sees all. We are living and worshiping and praising a God who sees. Amen? And there is hope and healing for those who are hurting. Amen? God has a blessing for your life. Amen? And if you got to run, you might as well run to God. Amen? Yes. Behold, the Bible says, thou art with child, and thou shalt bear a son, and his name shall be Ishmael, because the Lord has heard your affliction. In other words, the Bible is telling us, and as he's telling Hagar, God has heard your affliction. You cried out to God, well, God is here to answer you this morning, amen? It was just in that one breath, she found that she's got a breakthrough coming, amen? But you know, the Bible also told Hagar, she said, your son that is going to be born, his name shall be Ishmael. And he's going to be, in verse 12 it said, and he will be a wild man. His hand shall be against every man, and every, hand, every man's hand is going to be against him. How many people know that sometimes, you know, you might think you have a problem, but you know that some people have it worse than you have, amen? Amen. But let me tell you something this morning. You can have problematic kids and still have the hand of God on you. Amen? Amen. Amen. I mean, that's what God is telling Hagar. Hey, this boy that you have may have some problems. His hand is going to be against people and people are going to be against him. Amen? But there's still a blessing for you. Amen? Nothing can stop your blessing, you see. Sometimes even God will put people in what we call good trouble. Amen? Amen? And can I get a witness this morning? You know, sometimes God himself, there's the mysteries of God. There's the mysteries of his will. Sometimes there's a mystery to his wills and his ways and his word, you see. Abraham listened to his wife. You know, they want to have a baby. And he listened to his wife. And the wife said, well, just take my maid services. I can't have a baby. Y'all can have a baby together, you know. And then and, 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 and God decided to say, you know what? God said, well, look, I got I to gotta get involved here. I got to clean up this mess. Amen? You know, that's not the ideal way for a husband and wife to have a baby. Amen? But they made a mess, but the grace of God came to clean it up. Amen? You know, in other words, God said, I'll clean it up. You know, and, and, and God is telling them, I will bless but I will also test, amen? amen. You know, and I, in other words, I'm gonna test your faith, you see? Hagar, your child is gonna be 
a wild man. In other words, he may have some problems in this world. It may have some worry. The world may have problems with your child, but you're still going to get the blessing. Amen? You can't stop the blessings of God no matter what's going to happen in your life, no matter what you're going through. Keep your faith and trust in God. Keep believing if God put his hands on you, God won't take his hands off of you. Come on and give God praise this morning. God said, the Bible says that God heard your afflictions. Amen. And I'm here to tell you this morning, Sister Shalita, God has heard your afflictions. Amen. And you're but one breath away from a breakthrough. God is ready. Amen. And God is able and God is willing to give you the blessings you need. Amen. Prayer and pray. How many people know you can praise your way out of a situation? Amen. How many people know that you can just start praising God and your praise will change things? Amen. God said, Sarah, thy wife, you know, later on, he told Abraham, he said, look, I know all that stuff, all that business y'all trying to take care of between your wife and the maidservant. But God said, I am going to clean some things up for you, Abraham. Later on in, 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 in verse, in, in chapter 17, God told uh, Sarah and Abraham, he told Abraham, he said, he said, your wife is going to bear a son. Indeed, and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him, and all of the seed after him, an everlasting covenant. In other words, by this time, a whole lot of time has passed. The Bible says that Abraham was 99 years old when God spoke this, this, this promise into his life. As a matter of fact, when Sarah found out herself, after everything she had gone through, you know, because she's in her 90s also, and God said, you're going to have a child, and his name is going to be Isaac. And the Bible said that Sarah laughed, oh my God, Amen. as Amen. old as I am, God going to give me a baby. Yeah, God going to do it, you know. And the Bible, as a matter of fact, if you read a little, little further in, in, in chapter 17, you find out that Sarah is talking to her husband when, you know, he's having this conversation with, with the Lord. And Sarah said, she laughed, right? And then God said, is your wife laughing? And Sarah tried to clean it up herself. Oh, I, I wasn't laughing. <laughs> God said, yes, you were. But I'm going to bless you anyway, amen? amen? God has a sense of humor, amen? But God sometimes can do things in mysterious ways. Because Sarah is thinking, I'm too old. But God can be mysterious sometimes. And we know that God is able, amen? We know that God can do all things, amen? But because I know how mysterious God is and how mysterious God can be, I can tell you there's something that God can't do. Oh, somebody say, what? What, what? what are you saying, Pastor? What God cannot do? Let me tell you what God cannot do. God cannot fail. Amen? Amen. Amen. God cannot lie. Amen. Amen? God cannot be unjust. And God can't go back on his promise. If he said it, he'll do it. That settled it. Somebody pray God this morning. <laughs> Abraham, Sarah, used Hagar as a surrogate, you see. You see, the first thing they should have done is going to God in prayer together. Amen? Amen. But sometimes we take it upon ourselves to do things in our life because we're trying to fix it. But sometimes when you're trying to figure out, God already has it worked out. Let God plan unfold in your life. Amen? Yes, yes, yes. You know, but then, then when God said, look, Abraham, I'm going to give you a son between you and your wife. I know y'all tried to trump what you thought couldn't happen, what you thought was impossible. But with God, everything is possible. Amen? And so he told Abraham, he said, y'all going to have a son and his name is going to be Isaac. He said, but I haven't forgotten about Ishmael, he said, because I, I have heard thee and behold, I will bless him also. And he said, Ishmael was going to be fruitful and he's going to be multiplying exceedingly and 12 princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation. In other words, that wild man was still blessed by God. Amen. Somebody give God some praise. Praise God because God is omnipotent. Amen. 
God is omnipresent means he's ubiquitous. It means that God is present everywhere at once. Amen? You ever notice that the Bible said that the devil is roaming, seeing who he might devour? In other words, the devil goes from place to place trying to see who he can get. Amen? Because the devil can't be everywhere at the same time because the devil is not omnipresent. Amen? Only God is omnipresent. God is everywhere you need him to be. God is omniscient. Amen? Because God knows everything. He's all powerful, all possessive, complete power and authority is in the hands of our Lord thy God. When you need help, turn to God. If you need something going on in your life, turn to God. If you feel that you got to run, run to God. Amen? Because God is ready, God is willing, and God is able. Somebody praise Him this morning. Whatever you have going on in your life, Take it to God in prayer. Amen? Praise God. Prayer gets things done in God's way. And guess what? In God's time. Because I learned a long time ago, he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. Amen? And you got to have faith. And the Bible tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please God. Amen? You got to come to God and you got to believe in God. Because he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Amen? Are you ready to diligently seek the Lord? Amen? you got to reach out to God for everything that's going on in your life. Amen? Amen? You know, I learned a long time ago to pray. That's one of the first things my mother taught me how to do. As a little bitty boy, she taught me how to pray. And I'll never forget because mothers have a way of teaching you things in the most simplified way. I asked my mother when I, I had to be five, six years old, Mama, because I used to hear a lot about heaven. Mama, how do you get to heaven? Mama said, you've got to ask God to forgive your sins in order to get to heaven. She was teaching me at a very young age how to pray a prayer of repentance. In other words, she figured that one of these days you're going to end up making some mistakes, some things you're going to be sorry for, but before you leave this earth, you need to ask God to forgive you of all your sins and you can get to heaven. Amen? Amen. And it was just a simple way of teaching us the things. But I learned how to pray in a simple way. And sometimes one breath can bring about a breakthrough. Amen? Yeah. One breath! can bring about your breakthrough. Yes, amen? Yes. Sometimes all you got to do is shout hallelujah and God will fix a problem for you. Amen? Sometimes all you got to do is say thank you Lord and he'll fix a problem in your life. Amen? One breath. You're a breath away from your breakthrough. Amen? You know, and I told y'all the story before when I was a young kid, me and my little brother, we used to watch my older brother do some things and we always wanted to imitate him. But every child, every young boy in his life wants a BB gun, and I wanted a BB gun so bad that I was praying to God for one. Amen? I went to my mama, and I said, Mama, I want a BB gun. Mama said, you can't have no BB gun. You're going to put somebody out. Amen. Well, that wasn't good enough for me, so I took it to my daddy. You know, and I said, I'm going to go talk to my daddy, because my daddy, you know, he's a man of the house, right? <laughs> I said, Pop, Daddy, I, 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 I want a BB gun. I told Terry, I said, this is how we're going to get it done. Terry, my younger brother. We go in there to my daddy, and we told him, I said, daddy, we, 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 I want a BB gun. My daddy looked at me, he said, what did your mama say? <laughs> <laughs> or so I thought he was the boss. <laughs> but let me tell you something. I wasn't finished. Because since my mama told me how to pray, I decided I'm going to take this to God. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I went to the Lord, and I prayed to God. I heard what Mama said, and I heard what Daddy said, but I'm going to God, and I'm going to pray to God because I heard Sister Taylor, who taught us in Sunday school, she said, nothing is too big or too little to ask of God. So I'm taking this to God. I'm taking it higher than Mama. I'm taking it higher than Daddy. And I said, God, I want a BB gun. God said, one day you're going to learn what it says in the Bible. As soon as you're able to read a little bit better, children, obey your parents and the Lord. 
He may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. God held that prayer and held that thing off. He said, one day you're going to learn what I'm talking about. You ought to obey your parents. God said, you don't need no BB gun. You're going to push somebody out. Man. <laughs> I'm here to tell you this morning, by faith, we can access the blessings of God. By faith, we can access God Almighty. If we boldly go before the throne of God with confidence and knowing that he will answer our prayers. Amen? Hagar found herself wandering in the desert looking for water and she understood God was watching. Amen? When the angel approached her, she couldn't believe that she meant so much to God. She's thinking, my, your God sees me? I know that there are people in here that today, people today understand that sometimes. Sometimes we don't, we don't believe that we're worthy enough for God. But God just wants you to trust him because he's watching everything. Yes, yes. Cry out to the Lord God. You see, God sees. That's what she said. We serve a God that sees. We serve a God that's watching. We serve a God that sits high and he's looking at all the things that's going on in the world. But let me tell you something. I know there's a lot of people who raise the question. All this stuff going on in the world. Where is God? God sees it all. The question is, where are you? Amen. God is right where he needs to be. He's sitting on a throne like a king does. That's what a king does. He sits on his throne. He watches it all. You need to petition God through the man, Jesus Christ. Jesus said, if you ask, you shall receive it. If you're not, the doors are going to be open. Amen. you got to give it all to God. Jesus said that I am the way, not just uh, uh, some play thing, but I am the way, the truth, and the life. Whatever you need, come to me. And if you ask in my name, then you believe it, you shall have it. Somebody ought to give God some praise this morning. We are all children of the Most High God. You know, one time the disciples even asked Jesus, who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus took a little child and set that child in the midst of them and said, he who humbles himself like that little child, the same is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It's time for you to start talking to God like he's your father, amen? It's time to talk to God like you are a child of God. It's time for you to start talking to God like God is watching over you because he is, amen? God is still on the throne. God is still in the prayer minute. God is still in the healing minute. God is still doing miracles. Praise God. Your blessing will come through your praise. Your blessing will come through your prayer. And prayer is just a breath away from a breakthrough. Amen? Amen. The Bible says, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. Amen? Amen. In due season. You see, don't underestimate your value in the sight of God. God is, is, is where you originated from. And guess what? God is your destiny. Before this thing is all over. Before everything is over. Your destiny is tied up with Christ. When you give your life to Jesus, you become heirs to everything that he inherited. Amen? Amen. You become heirs of the kingdom of God. You be able to go into that great glorious place that Jesus said he was going to prepare for you. He said that I go and prepare you a mansion. Amen. And he said if I go and prepare you this place, I will come again and receive you unto myself. Praise God. I mean, you know, the Bible tells us that in the book of Matthew, uh, uh, the Bible said that are not two sparrows sold for a farthing? And it said, and one of them shall not fall to the ground without your father knowing about it. Not a sparrow will fall on the ground without God knowing it. Because God sees. Amen. God sees the little birds. And if he's watching over the sparrow, then I know he's watching over you. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You gotta ask yourself sometime, if God cares so much about them, isn't he watching over me? Yes, he is. Prayer puts you a breath away from a breakthrough. 
You see? You see, we value so many things in our lives sometimes. You see? But I'm here to tell you this morning, sometimes the things that we value are sometimes the things, just these material things in our lives. You know, we value things like our rings and our watches and our purses, you know, even our cell phones, you know. We leave home without the cell phone, we turn around and go all the way back. But see, God doesn't want to lose you because he values you. He gave you Jesus and Jesus gave his life for you. Yes. Amen. You are more valuable than a cell phone. You are more valuable than a sparrow. You are more valuable than most precious gold, amen? That's the reason why I heard somebody say, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold, amen? amen. Because when you have reverence for God, he sent Jesus in the world to bring you comfort. He sent Jesus into the world to, to guide you and to teach you. And Jesus said that I'm going to come back for you. He's coming back for born again believers. He's not coming back for somebody because you're black. He's not coming back because you're white. He's not coming back because you're rich. He's not coming back because you're poor. He's coming back because you're born again. Give your life to Jesus and trust in the Lord. And he will continue to bless you. Amen. Have that reverence for God. Prayer is going to put you a breath away from your breakthrough. Praise is going to put you a breath away from your breakthrough. Amen. Amen. Reverence God. He has the power over what you do in this world and what you do in this earth. And he has power over where you will spend eternity. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say this, y'all, then I'm going to go. You find there are people in this world who have certain spirits about them. And this is the beauty of the mysteries of God. Some of us have that, 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 that butterfly spirit. Amen? And that's what I mean, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm saying is sometimes you find yourself, you know, where you, 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 you're moving kind of slow, you know. You find yourself where you, you feel a little, you know, a little out of sorts and things seem a little fussy. You find yourself all wrapped up in your own little cocoon. You, you, you find yourself all alone, you know, where there's nobody around you, you know. And sometimes, just like what we know to be a caterpillar, that's where you are in your life. You're that, that, you're that caterpillar. You just, you just can't seem to get a break. It just seems like everything is going wrong in your life. You seem like you're just moving real slow. You, you can't get ahead. You can't get a break, you know. And you're all alone, and you're all wrapped up in your cocoon. And people start looking at you, and they say, oh, look at him, he's moving so slow. Or look at him, all oh, wrapped up in your problems. Your, your, problem, your problem got you bound up and it got you wrapped up so tight. It just seems like you can't get out. You can't get a breakthrough. But in due season, yes, Lord. Yes. Come on, yes. Come on. Yes. in due season, yes. that thing we call a caterpillar that's been all slow and fuzzy and moving slow, that thing we call a caterpillar that's been wrapped up in a cocoon. One day in due season, that caterpillar comes out, spreads its wings, and fly. You're beautiful in the sight of God. That's what God will do for you in due season. You take the prayer away, amen. You take the breath away from your breakthrough this morning, amen. Like, hey, God, our message today, this woman found herself in the middle of a situation that was no fault of her own. Amen? But with a little praise in her breath, she found the breakthrough. God sees, and a mess will become a test, and a test will become a testimony. God sees, her son became the father of many nations, and bless God. God sees. Amen? I'll leave you with this. I read... In John's Gospel about two sisters. Two sisters who prayed for their brother. They had a brother named Lazarus. And those two sisters was praying for their brother. Oh, he's so sick. He's going through so much. But they realized they needed a breakthrough. They needed a breakthrough. And what they did was, they knew Jesus because they could testify that Jesus is a friend of mine. 
Anybody have Jesus as a friend? Amen. 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 And so the two sisters, they realized that we got to send word to Jesus. Because we believe that we're just one breath away from a breakthrough. So they sent for Jesus, who was in, in a place just outside of Bethany where they lived. And when Jesus got the news that Lazarus was sick, he told his disciples, he said, listen, we got to go to see Lazarus, who was falling asleep. The disciples didn't quite understand. These are some of the mysteries of God. The disciples questioned Jesus. Well, if he's sleeping, you'll be all right. Jesus said, let me put it to your plan that he's dead. He's dead. But Martha and Mary sent word to Jesus, who was in a place, like I said, outside of Bethany. And when Jesus got the word, he didn't just move immediately. That's why we call this thing due season. Two days later, Jesus said, we're going to go to Bethany. And when we get to Bethany, you're going to see the glory of the Lord. When they got there, Martha said to Jesus when she saw him, Lord, if you had come, if you had just been here earlier, my brother would not have died. Jesus said, that brother shall rise again. Your brother's going to rise again. Because in one breath, you're going to get a breakthrough. One breath, you're going to get a breakthrough. Martha said, well, I know he's going to rise again on the resurrection, on that glorious day. Jesus said, no, not on the resurrection day. As a matter of fact, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, he shall live again. And whosoever lives, and believe in me, shall never die. All right. Never die. That's for you. That's for you. And that's for you. Yes. If you yes. believe in Jesus, you shall never die. Yes. Jesus said, I know he's been in the grave. They say, Lord, he's been dead now, and he's been in the grave four days. But Jesus said, I know he's been in that grave for four days. But in one breath, in one breath, he's going to get a breakthrough. Yes, 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 yes. Jesus said, take me to the place where he is. Show me the tomb. One breath. He shall live again. And it took Jesus to the place where Lazarus had been in there for four days. Jesus said, take away the stone. And then Jesus lifted up his eyes to the heavens. And he said, Father, I thank you. He gave praise to God. Thank you. And when he had spoken, he cried out with one loud voice. One breath, Lazarus come forth, and Lazarus came back to life. One breath, you're just a breath away from a breakthrough. <laughs> Prayer puts you one breath away from a breakthrough. All your trials and tribulations, one breath. When you're going through the valley of the shadow of death, one breath. When you're standing at your Red Sea, one breath. When you're standing at the River Jordan, one breath. When your walls of Jericho are falling down, one breath. When you're sick and you feel like you can't get well, one breath. When you can't find a friend, one breath. Sometimes up, sometimes down, one breath. Amen. 
do is cry out to Jesus. Somebody shout, Jesus! 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 One breath! Your breakthrough lies in your faith in the Savior. Your breakthrough lies in the power of the Holy Spirit. Your breakthrough lies in your faith and trust in God. One breath. One breath. You're one breath away from a breakthrough. Somebody say praise God. God bless you this morning. May God keep you this morning. Come on and just praise Him this morning. God is good. You're just a breath away. You're one breath away from a breakthrough. Amen. Amen. So all I want you to do right now is pray with me. Right now, in the sanctuary, or maybe if you're looking at me on Facebook, or you're looking at me on YouTube, or you're looking at me right now at our website, gentilygreaterharvest.com. This prayer. Your prayer, our prayer, we're one breath away from a breakthrough. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you. We trust you. We believe in you. We cry out to you for every affliction that we have. We pray that you will bring about a healing in our life. For every weakness, we pray that you will bring about a strength. God, for every amount of confusion in our minds, we pray for your comfort and guidance. We pray for your love and your wisdom. And I pray, God, that you would touch every single person under the sound of my voice, whether they be here in the sanctuary or they're watching me somewhere like right now, God. Bless them and their families. The breath of God, breathe on us, Lord, and bring about a breakthrough in our lives. For whatever the need is, God, we know Jesus can meet it. He lived. He died. He bled. He rose again. That is our belief. And we ask you, Father, to just be merciful and kind to us. Deliver us, God. In the name of Jesus, God. Everything, God, that we need. Hear our prayers. Grant us Love, mercy, healing, provisions, and prosperity, and peace. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Somebody give God some praise.